It's part eight of our conversation with John Anderson. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Topographic oceans, you know, that, why do you think people were, did not fall in love with that right away? Now it's, it's one of my favorite. I really like that album. It made me think that album. I just loved it. I think, I think honestly, it was a, it was a, I figured it out. We were making the record, me and Steve and Chris, Eddie Alford, Alan yeah. White, and Rick was doing another album down the road. So Rick was not on top of it. He was side, he came in, he did a remarkable solo in, in, in the, the second movement, remembering. And uh, it, it was a series of chords that Steve had put together for the solo, because the idea was create a series of chords for a solo from Rick, you know. <laughs> and uh, I remember the moment pretty vividly because Rick came in, Jolly Rick, you know, making his next, uh, he was doing great, you know, he'd he, he done uh, Henry VIII, I think it was, Six Wives, and I think that was what he was up to and everything. So he wasn't sort of concentrated on the album so much as, do oh, I'm in the band, I'll come and play, what do you need, I can do that. And, you know, love the guy, but when, when he was presented with these chords, but probably about a dozen chords to go through the solo, what he would play, very, very good at that kind of playing, and then when the chord changed, he'd change and then change again, and it was just going on and on. <laughs> so I said, look, Rick, you're a good musician. Can you pretend there are no chords there and play as though there are no chords there at all? And he said, looked at me and said, what are you talking about? I said, well, I can hear the chords. They're all must, they all must be in a certain key of sorts. Right. Just play on top of them and float and then come running through. And then this is me, you know, on my third joint of the day. So I'm saying, come on, you can do this. And he tried it a couple of times and he, he got a third time. He got it. And it was, it was pure magic, really. For me, it was very musical and very deep, this, this solo. Unfortunately, he never learned it. So when we went on tour with it, he had a tough night because he knew his solo was coming. It never actually worked. And I mentioned it to him. I said, if you learn it, it will help you. And I must have asked him 20 times on tour. So that was enough. He'd had enough of me. And I understood, you know, I was, I was hyper. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy that we did that album because we wouldn't have done Awaken. This is what I say and it, all the time, but we wouldn't have got to that place and done Awaken. And Rick rejoined the band and pulled the rabbit out of the hat, the cat, the rabbit, <laughs> whatever you do. Yeah. And uh, the rest is history. The people really got to love that album on many different levels. It was made with a lot of um, commitment and adrenaline. And it was a force pushing it along, you know. Yeah. And uh, heavily criticized, but, you know, so was Mozart. Yeah. No, that's not true. When did the other three guys from Yes, when did they contribute, like Steve and Alan and Chris? What, when did they contribute on the album? Well, Alan and Chris were in L.A. in 1990, so I took the tapes down to L.A. and got them to play on Activate Me and um, Firstborn Leaders. And uh, I just, you know, I just paid them some money because <laughs> musicians, you know, because mm -hmm. they say, yeah, we'll do it. How much do we get? I said, uh, thousand bucks each okay we'll do it so you you're great <laughs> <laughs> and uh there was a a song on the 
that we, that we had from Big Bear called Now. And it was like a three minute song, but it, it just seemed to need help. I don't know, there's something about you, you're working on a, a, a piece and you're going, well, we could put some orchestra in there, we could do some choir. No, no, it's not working. Why don't we just cut it up into three, first verse, second verse in the middle of the album with some orchestration, and the last verse at the end of the album with a little more orchestration, which we did. And uh, it was around Christmas time, and I just said, uh, I'm going to call up Steve and get him to play on it. You know, he owes me because... I sang on his uh, Bob Dylan album. I sang Sad Eyes Lady of the Lowlands, which I really like. And uh, so Steve played on it, and I was listening to Steve, and all of a sudden I started singing because, you know, that's what I do with Steve. I used to, you know, we were very, very close, musically speaking, for a few years, and a uh, remarkable period of time in my life because I was able to create with him structure for fragile and close to the edge, of course, and topographic. And uh, that was a very intense time because uh, musically, yes, was like doing what it wants to do. There was just so much musicianship in the band. I didn't want to keep it down to like, three minutes, 33 seconds. Record companies always say that, you know, just just enough for the radio. I, said, no, I don't think so. Um, because I felt I was too old to be a pop star in that sense. But there we were creating really fantastic, uh, adventurous music. And when I finished this album, I felt the same way, that it was like an adventure creating and worth listening to. It's really a special event in my life anyway. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.